As we've already heard, uh, this week we have a double Torah portion, Parsha Baha, which means on the mount, and Parsha Bechukotai, which means in my statutes. And in Parsha Behar, we read about the sabbatical year and the year of Jubilee. And we know that Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 through 4, the opening verses of Parsha Behar, tells us that in the sabbatical year, meaning every seventh year, that the land itself was to rest. There was no sowing your field or pruning your vineyard. When you think about it, similar in ways to the regular weekly Sabbath where we rest on the seventh day. Now the sabbatical year is also connected with the year of release. In Hebrew, Shemitah. Everyone say Shemitah. And according to uh, the book, the mystery of the Shemitah, which is written by uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, much of this year, 2015, is a Shemitah year also with two very significant solar eclipses, one which already uh, took place on the 29th of Adar, another one which will take place in the fall, and uh, we believe that these solar eclipses have something very significant to do with uh, Israel and with world history. I recommend you reading uh, Rabbi Khan's book for further insight. But at any rate, in the seventh year, all debts were forgiven, according to Deuteronomy 15, verse 1 through 3. Each person who had to borrow money in the seventh year was given a clean slate. Now, Yeshua, who is the Torah made flesh, the living word, he elaborates deeper in the Brit Hadashah and the New Covenant on uh, the subject of forgiveness of debts, teaching us to forgive the sins of those who have sinned against us in Matthew chapter 6 and in Matthew chapter 18. Yeshua teaches us how to pray and he, in that prayer he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And also when Shimon Peter, Simon Peter, asked him how many times must I forgive my brother in Matthew 18, Yeshua answers 70 times, 7 times, meaning really without limit. Now for a full teaching on the sabbatical year and on the year of release, the Shemitah, you can get a teaching on CD downstairs later from May 19, 2012. But the, today, I would really like to focus more on the year of Jubilee, in Hebrew, Shanat HaYovel, how it is fulfilled in Yeshua, and also making personal application of the Jubilee in our lives today. So I hope you have your Bibles with you. If you do, let's turn to Leviticus chapter 25. Have so far, we'll travel. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 25, let's begin with verse 8. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years, and the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you forty-nine years. Then you shall cause the shofar, you can just cross out trumpet and read shofar in the Hebrew text. You shall cause the shofar of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. Who can tell me what day is that? Tenth day of the seventh month? Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. On the day of atonement, you shall make the shofar to sound throughout all your land. And here is our Torah reading. Uh, this morning. How many of you think Holly did a beautiful job? In her yeah. And you shall con 
consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. So basically, in the year of jubilee, every man was free to return to the property that was originally allotted to him and to his family under the leadership of Yehoshua, Joshua, after the future conquest of Canaan. Even if he previously sold it to another Israelite, or even if he and his family were working as hired hands on another Israelite's property, when the shofar sounded, everyone was free to go home. Blessed are the people that know that joyful sound. Amen. Now, in reality, it is impossible for us today to count the 49 years leading up to the year of Jubilee. Why, you ask? Why? Because no one would know actually when to begin counting. The Jubilee was not observed prior to, during, or after the Assyrian and Babylonian exile. And furthermore, the Jubilee calls for all 12 tribes and their inhabitants to be back in the land. Otherwise, the property cannot be returned to its rightful owners. But here's the good news. The reinstitution of the year of Jubilee literally is the work of the Messiah. Amen. When Yeshua returns, and how many of you know Yeshua is coming back? When Yeshua returns, he will declare the jubilee of all jubilees. And the counting will begin again when the King of Israel, Yeshua, returns in connection with the millennial reign of the Messiah, which is when the Torah, including Leviticus 25, when the Torah will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Also, when all the inhabitants will be back in the land again. Now, I think this is quite amazing because not only will the land be divided up amongst the Israelites, but to those who stood with them. How many of you are going to stand with Israel in these last days? Hallelujah. So let's turn now to Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47, and we're going to be reading verses 21 through 23, and this actually is a latter-day millennial reign prophecy. Ezekiel 47, verse 21. Again, a latter-day prophecy. Thus you shall divide this land amongst yourselves according to the tribes of Israel. It shall be that you will divide it by lot as an inheritance for yourselves and for the strangers. In Hebrew it reads gerim, a plural form of ger, one who is from the nations, a stranger, who dwell among you and who bear children among you. And that's the heart of God there, that God is out of families. They shall be to you, meaning the stranger, shall be to you as native born among the children of Israel, they shall have an inheritance, meaning land rights, with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall be that in whatever tribe the stranger dwells, there you shall give him his inheritance, says the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when Hashem grafts you into that olive tree, He really grafts you in permanently. Praise God. And we know that Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paul, adds in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, that Gentile believers in Yeshua are fellow citizens yeah. with the Jewish people yeah. and share in the commonwealth of Israel. Yeah. Praise God. And you know we're all one in the Messiah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, do you know that even the Dead Sea is going to be alive yeah. at that time also, yeah. according to verse 9 and 10 here in Ezekiel? Chapter 47, and let me ask you, how many of you know today that God can 
take something that was dead and make it live again. Hallelujah. were completely canceled no matter what you owed someone wow. meaning all mortgage lease rental and labor agreements were automatically terminated all personal debts were completely wiped out somebody say it's such a deal <laughs> That time again, about once a year, <laughs> I'd like to give a refresher course on the three different ways to say such a deal. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay, way number one. Such a deal. Such a deal. Way number two. Such a deal. Such a deal. And way number three is a little more down and dirty. Such a deal. I don't know if they'll teach you that in seminary school, but I thought it was important. Now the year of Jubilee had what I would call a leveling effect on the Israelites because it gave everyone a chance to start over. Everyone's slate was wiped clean. Just as it is for us when we accept the Messiah Yeshua into our lives. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in the Messiah, who's in the Messiah today? Hallelujah. If anyone is in the Messiah, the old has gone and the new has come. Now the year of Jubilee was actually ushered in with the sound of the shofar. sins were forgiven through the blood of atonement. Let's remember that for a little bit later. Now the word Jubilee in Hebrew is pronounced Yovel. Everyone say Yovel. Yovel. And it actually comes, it's quite interesting, from the root word Yuval. Everyone say Yuval. Yuval. Which translated into English means Jubal. Now the name Jubal is actually the name of the first musician in history. According to Genesis chapter 4, verse 21, Jubal is the father of all musicians. And his name, we know there's great significance to names, his name actually means to bring forth a stream as a stream of water. Hence, we have all kinds of connections here with the year of Jubilee, the shofar, the moving of the Holy Spirit and the prophetic song, which we know is often equated with streams of living water. Remember that Yeshua on the last and greatest day of the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, he stood up and he said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me and from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. How many of you are thirsty for that? Mayim, mayim, those living waters today, hallelujah. So you can imagine the joy that came over the whole land when the shofar was sounded. Freedom from debt, freedom from slavery, free to go home. Wow. Now let's stretch your imagination for a minute. Can you imagine if your bank or your mortgage company or your credit card company or the IRS <laughs> called him and said, you know, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, I just heard the sound of the shofar <laughs> proclaiming the year of Jubilee, so we are going to completely cancel all your debts that you have to us. Stay by What would you say to that? Thank you. 
different three kinds of saying such a deal going on at the same time there. I almost had like a little Tower of Babel thing going on there. <laughs> such a deal is right. Now as history continued, after the conquest of Canaan, the year of Jubilee was and continued to be uh, celebrated in Israel, except for periods of time when the Israelites were in a state of rebellion against God's word, such as committing idolatry, worshiping false gods, practicing paganism, in short, abandoning the Torah. And this began toward the end of Solomon's reign and continued for about 400 years under the leadership of many evil kings in Israel, the northern kingdom, and Judah, the southern kingdom, again leading to the Assyrian and Babylonian exile. Now the prophet Yirmiyahu, the prophet Jeremiah, though, warned against the violation of the year of Jubilee. Let's turn back to Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah 34, let's read verse 16 and 17. The Lord says, Then you turned around and profaned my name, and every one of you brought back his male and female slaves, whom he had set at liberty, at their pleasure, and brought them back into subjection to be your male and female slaves. Therefore, thus says the Lord, you have not obeyed me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every one to his neighbor. And now the Lord gets a little sarcastic here. And he says, Behold, I proclaim liberty to you, says the Lord, to the sword, to pestilence, and to famine. And I will deliver you to trouble among all the kingdoms of the earth. So as you can see, the Lord was not very happy here about the violation of the year of Jubilee. And soon after this prophecy in Jeremiah 34 actually came the Babylonian exile. However, at this time the Lord also raised up the prophet Isaiah to speak further about the year of Jubilee. And we know that Isaiah is well known for his many messianic prophecies about Yeshua, such as Isaiah 7 verse 14, Behold, a virgin will conceive, and you shall call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 9, verse 6, For to us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And he shall be called Pele Yohetz, Wonderful Counselor, El Gibor, Mighty God, Aviad, Everlasting Father, Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. And then there's Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, and a branch, it reads in Hebrew, Netzer, for branch, pointing to a Yeshua of Netzeret. A branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. A couple of more. In Isaiah 48, verse 16, as I interpret it, this is the triune nature of God in one single verse of Scripture. It reads Isaiah 48, 16, And now the Lord God has sent me with his Spirit. Or, and now the Father has sent me the Son with His Spirit. And that's uh, Isaiah 48, 16. Then we have Isaiah 53. We know speaks of God's suffering servant, Yeshua, who was pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and by His stripes we are healed. Now with all that in mind, let's read Isaiah chapter 61. Verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 61, beginning with verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. The word anointed reads in Hebrew, mashach similar to Mashiach, the Anointed One. To preach good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now we know that everything that's written in the Torah 
in the Nevi'im, meaning the prophets, and then the Tehillim, the Psalms, testified of Yeshua. Yeshua even said that himself in Luke chapter 24, verse 34. <coughs> he is the written word which became the living word in Yeshua of Nazareth. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. John 1, 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So therefore, the words of Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2, that we just read, would literally find their fulfillment in the Messiah as well, just as all the other Messianic prophecies in Isaiah. So God did establish the year of Jubilee in the Torah to give the Israelites a chance to start over socially and economically, but it went much deeper than that. It pointed toward Yeshua, who one day would really set them free. Hallelujah. 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 Including Amen. you and me today. Amen. 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 Remember, the more you read the Torah, the more you see Yeshua in it. Amen. Now, let's turn in the Brit Hadashah, the New Covenant, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Where we see Yeshua coming to his hometown synagogue in Nazareth. Luke chapter 4. We're going to begin with verse 14. Then Yeshua returned in the power of the Spirit, underlined in the power of the Spirit, to Galilee, and news of him went out throughout all the surrounding region. Now let's hold it up there. In, Matt, in Luke chapter 3, uh, we see Yeshua goes into the waters of Mikvah, the waters of immersion. And then in the beginning of Luke chapter 4, verse 1, we see that he is filled with the Spirit as he is led into the wilderness. But now here it says that he returns in the power of the Spirit. Now, there is a difference between the two. And as believers, we may be filled with the Spirit, but we too may need to go through our own wilderness experiences like the Messiah in order to learn how to operate in the power of the Spirit. Verse 15, And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. I like this. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Amen. Yeshua attended Shabbat services in the synagogues Amen. on a regular basis. Amen. And guess what? He still does. Matter of fact, he's here right now. Verse 17, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book. Obviously, that was a Haftar reading. And he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Amen. 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 So early in his ministry, Yeshua makes this astounding declaration that he is the Messiah, but they rejected him. And as a matter of fact, they not only rejected him, but they became furious with him, beginning in verse 28. And they even tried to throw him off of a cliff. But he just slipped through the crowds. Amen. You know that was divine intervention. Yes. I believe 
God made time stop for a few moments for his son. You know, God does things like that. Kind of reminds me of when Hashem made the sun and the moon stand still for Joshua as he defeated the Amorites. Now, unfortunately, even as it was at the synagogue in Nazareth, it's still the same today. Yeshua is still being rejected by his Jewish brothers. Yes. But one day, somebody say one day. One day, one day hallelujah and wow-hallelujah and glory hallelujah. The, the scripture tells us that they will look upon him, the one whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for a firstborn son and an only child. And we also know that Paul says in Romans 11:26 26 that the deliverer will come from Zion and all Israel shall be saved. Hallelujah. We just speak that into the prophetic realm. The deliverer, Yeshua, will come from Zion and all Israel shall be saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now we praise God for the growth of Jewish believers in Yeshua today that we're seeing all around the world. I think I've mentioned this a few times that uh, recently we have found out that there are more Israelis who are accepting Yeshua as Messiah than ever before. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that is certainly going to play a major part in these last days. You know, you want to see revival when the Jewish people start getting saved in great numbers. There's going to be a revival like this world has never seen before. Now let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, a familiar scripture for us that we all love to read. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel. And with the trumpet, underline trumpet, I'll explain that in a moment, with the trumpet of God, and the dead and Messiah will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet, emphasis on the word meet, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now the word trumpet there reads in the original Greek salpinx, which actually means a quavering or a vibration or a reverberation. Though it could indicate the quavering or the reverberation of a trumpet or a shofar. But I believe actually it's referring to the shofar blast from heaven, the same shofar that sounded from heaven in Exodus 19, verse 16 at Mount Sinai when the Torah was given when Moses, the scripture says, brought the people out to meet with God. Amen. Only here, when this shofar sound, we will be brought out of the earth to meet Yeshua in the air. Hallelujah. But imagine the joy when we hear the blast of that shofar from heaven. Announcing the jubilee of all jubilees, announcing the second coming of the Messiah, the rapture, hallelujah, and going to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Announcing the jubilee of all jubilees, followed by the millennial kingdom of the Messiah, where we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And I also, as Ezekiel 47 told us, and to divvy up the land. Hallelujah. And then after that, going home to live with Yeshua in the kingdom of heaven forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Now I'd like us to stand for a moment. And let's have a long blast of the shofar.
Somebody shout, it's the year of Jubilee! to our lives today. Because even though we know the basic principles of the year of Jubilee, many believers still do not have the full release and the full victory that God really wants them to have. Unfortunately, many believers are still kind of bound up with problems and attacks from the enemy, which is stealing their joy. You know, we see it all over the world today, all the chaos that's happening. But you know, we have not been given a spirit of fear, Amen. but of love yeah. and power yeah. and a sound of love. Yeah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's perfect love casts out all fear. Yeah. That's right. Yes. And God wants us to have a real breakthrough and a real victory through understanding uh, the principle of the Jubilee. So let's take a closer look at the four main aspects of the year of Jubilee as we saw it in Leviticus chapter 25, as earlier. Number one, it was proclaimed on the Day of Atonement. Secondly, it was ushered in with the blast of the shofar. It is also connected with streams of water and the prophetic song. And also, it represents a release from captivity through the Holy Spirit. Now we know the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, of course, is the tenth day of the seventh month. And that is clearly a reference to the blood of Yeshua. How many of you know today that there is power in the blood? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say it. There's power in the blood. Say it again. There's power in the blood. Hallelujah. And your sins and my sins have been paid for. Slate, white, clean, all debts canceled, even thrown into a sea of forgetfulness, says the prophet Micah chapter 7 verse 19. You know, if your sins have been put under the blood of Yeshua, God doesn't even remember your sins anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Says Jeremiah 31, verse 34. So therefore, don't let anyone or anything lay a guilt trip on you. Amen. And don't lay a guilt trip on yourself either. What do I mean by that? No personal pity parties. Amen. 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 You remember that song, right? Yeah. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to, cry if I want to, cry if I want to. You would cry too if it happened to you. Boopie doo, boopie doo. Some worms, pink ones, little ones, fat ones, juicy ones, ones that squiggle and squirm. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me. I'm gonna eat some worms, pink ones, little ones, fat ones, juicy ones, ones that squiggle and squirm. <laughs> okay, so the phrase there's power in the blood, the phrase there's power in the blood is very real. It's not just some uh, religious <laughs> cliche that we like to say. It has a real effect in the spirit realm, in the spirit world. Satan hates that phrase because he knows that he was defeated by the blood of the Lamb. And that we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Satan hates the blood, but you know what? That's just too bad. He's been defeated by the blood of Yeshua. Praise God. You know, I've been a, a praise and worship leader for many, many years, and I have learned one uh, secret 
of the kingdom in regards to worship. And sometimes if I sense that the congregation is uh, being oppressed right. or just as some kind of heaviness, yeah. I will immediately pick some songs about the blood Amen. to put into Amen. the praise and worship. Yeah. And as we start singing about the blood of Yeshua, the atmosphere clears sure. and our joy returns. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. So God purposely connected the year of Jubilee with the blood of Yeshua. And you and I need to get that into our minds. Get it into your knower, if you will. Because when the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. All of your debts have been canceled. Slate has been wiped clean. And hallelujah. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now the second main theme is the shofar. It actually proclaims the jubilee. It announces it. It makes it official. And it causes everyone to wake up. Hallelujah. It actually says liberty and freedom and victory. Hallelujah. when God restored Jerusalem back into the hands of the Jewish Amen. people. The shofar was being sounded over and over again. We know that the shofar sends confusion into the camp of the enemy and yeah. victory into the camp of the righteous. Hallelujah. I often say this. It's an audible sound, the shofar, that we can hear with our natural ear, but it's also causing things to happen in the spirit realm that the natural ear cannot hear. And that is mainly the tearing down of the strongholds of the enemy. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, even to the pulling down of strongholds and the shofar. It is a weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. And as we saw earlier, the shofar will sound, the angel will shout. And we will see Yeshua coming on the clouds of glory to claim his bride. And again, I ask you, who's looking forward to the wedding supper? Now, thirdly, God connected the year of Jubilee, as we saw earlier, with streams of water and the prophetic song. Now, the prophetic song, by the way, is also known as the song of the Lord. And that means a brand new song that's often birthed spontaneously right in the middle of a praise and worship service. Right in the middle of a spirit-filled praise and worship service. And is brought on by the mantle of prophecy that's flowing through the congregation by a cloud of glory, if you will, the Shekinah, that's hovering, hovering over the congregation. It will bring forth a brand new song. That's interesting because it's the same Holy Spirit that was hovering over the waters as the Lord was giving birth to a brand new creation. Yeah. Hope you got that. Amen. And often that song of the Lord, a prophetic song, will begin with a yielded worshiper, one who is hearing from the Spirit, and will start to bring forth a few words and a melody, and then starts to sing what you would call a new song. The others join in. The dancers join in with anointed movement. Praise God. Hallelujah. The flags are lifted up. Yes. The banners are lifted yes. up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And the Holy Spirit, the worship leader, is orchestrating everything Come on. Come on. in honor of the King Amen. who is sitting on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all about Yeshua. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Right. And then what began as a little trickle of water with that yielded worshiper, and this may apply to any one of you sometime. What started as a little trickle of water became streams of living water, and as the whole congregation joins in, it becomes a mighty river, a mighty river of praise and prophecy. And God wants you and I to get wet in the spirit and to jump into that river. Jump into the 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 river. Because wherever that river flows, guess what? It brings healing. It brings joy. It brings liberty. It brings freedom. That's what the Jubilee is all about. And also, it will bring the whole congregation into higher elevations of worship. Amen. We want to go up yes, yes. into higher elevations yes, yes. of worship. How many of you today want to come up to Mount Zion, yes. to the city of God, yes. to the heavenly Jerusalem, yes. to the joyful assembly of thousands upon thousands of angels, yes. to the assembly of the firstborn where our names are written in heaven? Hallelujah. To come up to Mount Zion, to fall down before the throne of the Almighty, with the four living creatures and the 24 elders and a countless multitude of Malachim, crying out glory and honor and power and praise and riches and strength and wisdom belongs to the Lamb of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of God, Almighty, who was and is and is to come again. And make no mistake about it, He is coming again. So God connected the year of Jubilee with streams of living water because it's Yovel, which comes from the root Yuval, which is the name of Jubal, the first musician in history, and his name means a stream of water. Yes. Get that into your knower and jump into the river of praise. Amen. 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 And finally, God connected the year of Jubilee with even more freedom and release in our lives through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeshua said, remember in Luke chapter 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor. How many of you have received that good news that Yeshua is Lord of all and He is risen from the dead? And make it live again. Praise him. His mighty name, hallelujah. Yeshua also said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to heal the brokenhearted. You know, God just didn't heal our heart, He actually gave us a brand new one. That's right, that's right. Amen. In Ezekiel 36, verse 26, He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit, meaning my spirit, within you. Yeshua says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim liberty to the captives and to those who are oppressed or to those who are in bondage. Through Yeshua, hallelujah, we've been set free. Through Yeshua, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Greater is he who lives in us than he that's in the yes. world. We are overcomers yes. by the blood of the Lamb. And God always causes us to triumph in the Messiah, Yeshua. Yeshua, he is the glory and the lifter of our heads. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Somebody lift up your hands and praise the Lord.
flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against you.
Let's give the Lord another good kick. 